So, to simplify all of that material we just went through, glycolysis is the process of breaking apart glucose to get two pyruvates, and you make two NADH in that process, we'll use those later, and you make two ATP, or you get two ATP net. Now, all this happens in the cytosol of the cell. It happens outside of the mitochondrion. Uh, and then those pyruvates are allowed to enter the mitochondrion where they will be oxidized further in order to release even more energy and get more ATP and get more NADH and, and other coenzymes as well. So since this happens in the cytoplasm, all of the enzymes that did that process that we just had up here, they are soluble, they're water soluble, they are hydrophilic molecules, they mix in well. Whenever you have processes that are occurring inside the cytoplasm, that watery medium of the cytoplasm, those are going to be hydrophilic uh, enzymes. So this is one of the reasons why it's important which amino acids you use to make up your protein. Some are hydrophilic and some are hydrophobic. Anything that happens inside of a membrane, like the light-dependent reactions, for instance, or later we're going to talk about oxidative phosphorylation, that's going to be hydrophobic enzymes uh, involved in that process. So, Glucose enters the energy investment phase of glycolysis in which it is broken down. We invest two ATP at the beginning, that's the investment, but then we enter the energy payoff phase of glycolysis where we make four ATP, so we say two net ATP, right? But we also make two NADH, that other coenzyme. We're going to keep a running tally of all of the coenzymes that we make in this process, so the counting works out at the end. So glycolysis. Two ATP net and two NADH. So now it's time to talk about the anatomy of a mitochondria. Uh, you can see that it's got two membranes involved. You have the kind of kidney-shaped outer membrane that's kind of defining the overall shape of this uh, mitochondrium, and then you have this squiggly inner membrane that's got all these folds on the inside. These have very logical names. They are called the outer membrane and the inner membrane. Now, in between these two membranes, there's a little gap, there's a little pocket of space, and that's going to come up later on. So that space in between the two membranes is called the intermembrane space. Hey, this thing is starting to look pretty simple here. Now, there's some more parts you're going to want to know about. For example, each one of those little folds on the inner membrane, that is called a cristae. It's called a crista. And the reason why those cristae exist is because the inner membrane is bigger than the outer membrane. It's got more surface area. Now, each membrane is kind of like a bag. It's a membrane surrounding a space. So imagine I have two bags here, this one which is shaped like a banana, and then this one which is just kind of a large bag travel, um, traveling bag. This is the larger bag, right? You can see that it holds more space. So if I'd like to put this large bag, this is like the inner membrane of the mitochondria, if I'd like to put this large inner membrane inside this small outer membrane, the only way for me to do it is to crumple it up, to fold it up, to jam it in there as far as it can go, right? Okay, so now I have a large membrane inside of a smaller membrane. And in order to get there, I needed all these little folds. These folds are called the crista. So why is the inner membrane bigger than the outer membrane? All of the enzymes which are going to take place uh, in the very final step of cellular respiration, oxidative phosphorylation, they're sitting on this inner membrane here. Just like in photosynthesis we have the thylakoid membrane, we had all those you know, enzymes, the photosystem, the cytochrome complex, all those uh, on the actual membrane, we have enzymes on this membrane as well. 
And if it's really, really big, you can put lots and lots of those enzymes on there. You have a lot more space to do work. So it's all about surface area. Half the answers in biology are surface area. So the inner membrane, has more surface area than the outer membrane because that's where all of the work of oxidative uh, that's where all the work is going to be done by enzymes at the very last step of this process. Now the mitochondrion is floating around inside the cytoplasm. Out in the cytoplasm is where glycolysis happens. Then we have this interior space here, right? Inside the inner membrane. Inside the inner membrane, there's a pocket of space and that's referred to as the matrix, okay? The Krebs cycle is going to occur inside the matrix. All right, so we have three steps. Glycolysis, next thing we're gonna do is with pyruvate oxidation. Then we have the Krebs cycle, which happens in the matrix. And we have oxidative phosphorylation, which happens across the inner membrane. Now on the slide here, I have ETC. That's not et cetera, that stands for electron transport chain. We saw an electron transport chain once before. Again, in the light dependent, not to keep bringing back photosynthesis, but these are our integrated concepts. The electron transport chain was that chain of enzymes and coenzymes and enzymes and coenzymes that were passing electrons from one to the other in order to get a little bit of energy out of that electron. Same idea is going to happen right at the end of cellular respiration, and that's going to happen across the inner membrane. 